In this lecture, we're going to identify and describe consumer surplus and also producer surplus. Let's begin with consumer surplus. In a market economy, when an individual makes a purchase or an economic transaction, they are doing so voluntarily. So they believe that the benefits of that purchase are greater than the costs of the purchase. And consumer surplus is a measurement of the net gain that an individual attains when they make a purchase. Um, so consumer surplus is actually the difference between the price you would pay, the maximum price you'd be willing to pay for a product, and the price that you did have to pay, the actual market price. Um, so quite often when you purchase something, you would be willing to pay more than you actually had to pay for it. Um, you wouldn't make the purchase if you were willing to pay less than the market price. So if you're gonna, if you're actually making the purchase, you're either willing to pay the exact amount, or maybe you'd possibly be willing to pay more than you had to pay. And in that case, you would have some consumer surplus. Okay, so let's take a look at consumer surplus and demand. Uh, we can see that we have four potential buyers here in this table, four people who um, want to buy pizza, and we can see each of the buyer's willingness to pay. So their willingness to pay is what it's worth to them. For example, Adam wants to buy a pizza, and it's worth $15 to him. He would be willing to pay up to $15. Katie would be willing to pay up to $13. Luke would be willing to pay up to twelve fifty, and Dan would be willing to pay up to eleven fifty for the pizza. That's how much happiness this pizza is going to bring to each person. The price of the pizza is eleven dollars, so that's what it actually costs to purchase the pizza. Therefore, the consumer surplus, or what each individual gains, is going to be the amount they are willing to pay minus the actual price of the pizza. Or you can see here that for each individual, it's different. For Adam, it's $4. For Katie, it's $2. For Luke, it's $1.50. And for Dan, it's $0.50. Cents. So the total consumer surplus in this market for the, the data that we're given is $8. So let's take a look at this um, in a graphical format. Here again, we're listing the amount that each individual is willing to pay for pizza. We have Adam, Katie, Luke, and Dan again. And then we have some other random people who are willing to pay um, prices that are less than the market price of pizza, so they don't even get names, I guess. <laughs> All right, so that actually gives us our demand curve for pizza. And as we know, the price of pizza is $11. So Adam's consumer surplus is $4. Katie's consumer surplus is $2. Luke's is $1.50, and Dan's is $0.50. Cents. So that area below the demand curve and above the price is the area of consumer surplus. If you're ever asked to identify the area of consumer surplus on a graph, um, it would be that light green section there. All right, let's take a look at um, how consumer surplus changes when price changes. So in this market, given the current demand curve and the current price equilibrium price and quantity, uh, the pink area represents the initial consumer surplus in the market. So again, the consumer surplus is the area below the demand curve and above the price that represents the consumer surplus in the market. If some change in the market occurs and the price drops, so this could be because of an increase in demand or um, an increase in, in, I'm sorry, a decrease in demand would cause the price to drop, not an increase in demand, my apologies, or an increase in supply or, or something else that causes the price to drop, say, to the price of P2, then you can see as that price drops from P1 to P2, the equilibrium quantity of sales increases to Q2. So we gain some additional sales because that price dropped, and now there are some additional consumers joining the market who are now willing to pay these new lower prices. Um, and the consumer surplus will increase. First of all, this light pink area represents the additional consumer surplus that's being added to the initial customers, because those same customers are still in the market. They're still going to purchase this good if the price drops. 
That's like saying, hey, I know you're willing to pay $11 for a pizza, but if the pizza was only 8 bucks, would you still buy it? Well, yes, you're still going to buy it, and your consumer surplus is going to grow. And because that pizza price dropped from 11 down to $8, some additional people are going to also enter the market, and that purple section represents the consumer surplus um, to the new customers who are now joining the market or now going to purchase the good because of the new lower price. So the total consumer surplus is the light pink, the dark pink, and the purple regions. All right, now let's talk about producer surplus. From the produ producer's point of view, um, a producer is not going to sell a product unless the producer believes that their benefits are greater than the costs of the sale. And producer surplus is the net gain that the producer is attaining by making the sale. So it's the same concept as consumer surplus, but now we're thinking about it from the producer's point of view and what the producer is gaining. So this is going to be the difference between the, the selling price of the product and the lowest reservation price that the producer would actually sell for. So let's take a look at an example here. Um, we have a supply curve, a market supply curve for painting houses here. Um, we can see that Grandma would paint the house for 500 bucks, Georgia would do it for 600, Frida would do it for 800, and Mary would do it for 900. If the market price of painting a house were $800, then Mary would not be willing to paint the house because her lowest reservation price that she will charge is 900 so she's not going to do it for 800 Therefore, Grandma, Georgia, and Frida um, are in the market for, for painting houses at this, at this price. Um, Grandma has $300 of consumer surplus. I'm sorry, producer surplus. Georgia has $200 of producer surplus. And Frida actually doesn't have any because she's willing to do it for 800 and the market price is 800 so she'll paint the house but she doesn't have any producer surplus uh, therefore the pr total producer surplus in the market is $500 in this example and again the producer surplus is going to be represented by the area above the supply curve and below the price on the graph all right so let's take a look at what happens to producer surplus when prices change in this market given the current supply curve and equilibrium price and quantity, the initial producer surplus is represented by the light blue area. And if something were to happen in this market to cause the price to increase, say an increase in demand for the product or something, then we're going to gain some additional producers who are now willing and able to sell the product because the price has increased. All right, so you can see that when that price increases from P1 to P2 and the quantity sold in the market increases from Q1 to Q2, first of all, those initial producers who are already selling the product are going to gain some additional producer surplus. And we're also going to gain some producer surplus from the producers who are new to the market uh, because of that new increased price. So when price increases, market producer surplus increases. And thinking um, vice versa, if price drops, then producer surplus will decrease. And that is it.